Once you completed the shock combat segment, you go to the mutual artillery fire phase, and that would be a case where this battery of, Ber of Bergian artillery would open fire, and they can fire at the screen or fire through the screen at one of these line battalions directly behind. If they so do it, firing through a screen remembers a one-third target. The mutual artillery fire phase um, is, again, a simultaneous firing by both sides. It's common to both sides. So before any losses are taken or affect the firepower, the units will fire at full starting strength of the turn. If any units take a loss, they would take a morale check for the loss to determine if they stand in good order, go into morale disorder, or worst case scenario, actually flee en route. Once you completed the mutual fire phase of the artillery, you come to a mutual small arms or infantry fire phase, again common to both sides, and this would be a case where the infantry lines would fire upon maybe the screen here, the screen would be firing out this way, but if the, in this unique situation, if the screen elects to fire, it must engage the shocking unit that's directly towards their front. Any loss that's taken is automatically going to come into this shocking column. Again, your firepower rules will come into play here. Also, one other quick note, when it comes to the difference between artillery fire and infantry fire, the guns will always fire effect first and give possible morale checks and cause possible morale checks before there is any infantry fire upon a battery. Now, once you completed the small arms segment, you've actually completed the first half of the turn. So you'd flip the chart over here. And you would, if you look at it closely, it looks like you're looking at the same chart that you previously saw in the other half, which in effect it really is. The only difference is, is the positioning of what is done on steps 2, 3, 4, and 6 is flipped from the side 2 over to side 1, and what was on side 1 is flipped over to side 2. Other than that, the sequence of play is exactly the same. You would do the mutual MFP phase. If there was any losses in the previous half turn, you would make your accounting for that. This is where you're going to do your Bergian, if they had any cavalry in the field, would declare their cavalry charges, and the Bodner forces would do any receiving morale checks, if so required, for those charges if they're successfully gotten. Then the Bergian side would do any rallying, if it's possible. And when it comes down to movement, the Bergian side would be on the lookout for possible counter charges based upon the movement actions of the Baden forces, if they come within four inches of the frontal face of a cavalry unit. Otherwise, the Badeners would do their facing and formation changes and then proceed to move their actual units. Now, at this point in time, the Badeners might elect to say, well, I'm going to close this screen down, do a, f a facing or formation change. Perfectly fine, but by doing that, they're going to get a lot of firepower from these respective three units. Not a very good tactic. Another option they could do would be to simply retire before the, the, the upcoming shock combat. And if they retire back, get out of the shock combat zone, which is by definition one inch directly in front of the shocking unit, the only thing that they're going to as a penalty would be to suffer the firepower of this advancing column. Also, if you retire away from any formed unit or a battery and you happen to start the turn within its minimum fire zone, which it certainly was here, you would also receive the firepower of the battery. So that might not be a too good of a selection of choice. So the third one, of course, is just simply there to take it. And that's typical for what you might see in a lot of light infantry versus mass infantry situations. You would come up to the upcoming shock phase, and we'll go through it at that point in time. Once all the movement is done, I mean, this infantry battalion might want to square up with the line, or if this screen did pull back, you might move this line forward. I mean, there's lots of things that can be done at this point in time. The shock combat phase and the command phase, actually the command phase first, would be done next. And maybe the, the Bergian officer would ride up and attach himself to this column going in. You never know. You might want to think about doing that. Then comes the shock combat phase. Well, here in the shock combat phase, the primary shock player is now side two. I, this column is going to attempt to do a shock on this light infantry. And if the light infantry is still there at this point in the game turn, turn phasing, i.e. after movement, but still in shock combat zone, that little zone in front, then what's going to occur is they're going to have to take a receiving role. And typically what will happen is they will fail their role, fail their morale, because of the differences between a light open order unit and a close order unit, and they will retire their 10-inch move to the rear in a, as a morale disordered unit. They're not routing, they're just retiring to the rear of things. 
and that would end the shock combat phase. Once the shock combat phase is completed, we go to a mutual artillery fire phase like we did in the previous half game turn, and a small arms mutual infantry fire phase at the same time. So the battery would fire, probably cause a loss. Once the loss is taken, you take a morale check, assuming they stood in good order and did anything, then you have some musketry fire back between these units because they're now close enough to be at least in long range musketry fire range. Once you completed all your firepower morale checks and rolls and things of that nature are done, you've officially completed one complete game turn. And you'd start again with a, another group of eight, like we did in the first segment, and move the game forward into that. So basically, the sequence of play is two eight-step or phases segments. Two of them together make a complete game turn of 20 minutes. You get six of them theoretically, and you have a complete game hour, etc., etc. And the game just keeps rolling along like that until one side of the army breaks or the scenario victory conditions have been met. Thank you for your time today. If you have any questions, always can give me a call or email me, of course. Otherwise, enjoy your gaming, and hopefully you can catch and look at some of the other videos which explain the more fine arts of firing, how to do rally rolls, how to declare charges, charging arc, the mutual fire phase of artillery, types of artillery fire, and the more finer points of the game.